well, didn't even realize this was this weekend, but uh, realized it now. So I'm going to be breaking down Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz. Uh, yeah, the promotion for this fight's been really shit. Like, I haven't seen anything, and I seen Nate Diaz say, "Don't watch my fight. I don't give a fuck." So Nate's obviously in full promoter mode because he's not even trying to promote this fight himself. So I can't imagine this is going to do very good uh, pay-per-view buys, if I had to guess. Like, I haven't seen anyone really talk about this, but it should be a fun fight. So I, I'm going to have to go with Jake Paul here, just because there is a clear weight difference between these two. What's Is this at 185 or 190? Let me check. Is that cruiserweight? So... So, 90 kilos. God. Yeah. Now, there's going to be some sort of weight limit in this fight. Because no way Nate would be fighting that heavy. But, uh... Yeah, I, uh... I feel like this is going to be really interesting. This big 10 rounds, though, honestly favours Nate. So maybe Nate can get something going. 185 pounds, okay, that's how much they're going to be weighing. Which is a lot heavier than Nate fights at. Nate's never fought at 185. He had a fight against Rory McMahon, I think his name was, where <clears throat> Nate weighed in at 171, and Rory missed weight by a bunch of weight. And so they made that a middleweight bout technically, but Nate was a middleweight size himself. But he won that fight, so... Yes, I think his name was Rory. No... I know Nate also fought Rory McDonald at World Away, but nah, this guy's name was Rory something else. This was a different Rory. It was Rory... Where's this dude? Yeah, um, Rory Markham. That was his name. And yeah, he was like a middleweight. He also fought at light heavyweight. This guy was massive. I don't know how he ever made World Away. And this guy was fucking just shredded. Well, does he, does he still fight? Apparently this guy is still fighting, but he hasn't fought since 2016, so I doubt that. Yeah. But anyway, enough, I'm, I'm getting distracted here. So with this fight, <clears throat> I think... I think Nate Diaz... I don't know. He, I don't know if he's he's been properly training for this fight or not. I've seen some footage where he's hitting pads and he he doesn't look the best. Like, firstly, got to mention that Tony Ferguson fight. Nate looked really slow in that fight, like a lot slower than normal. And that was against Tony, and Tony also looked horrible in that fight. So it was a really bad look for his last fight. So I think Jack, Jake just got a big youth advantage here. Size advantage, the boxing experience. I, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be really bad. But Jake has shown to have some like cardio issues in his fights. So maybe Nate Diaz can mix to the body and then maybe like just pressure at Jake. Maybe get him out of there eventually. Just because, yeah, Jake has really shown some, like cardio issues, especially in the Woodley fights. Actually, his cardio didn't look too bad from memory in the Tommy Fury fight. I think he got a knockdown in like the last round, didn't he? I don't know. I guess Jake's like forever improving because he's so young. It's like he's pretty new to the sport. Not like super new, but you know. He's only been training since like 2018, 2017, so. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Jake showed a really good chin against Tommy Fury. And I, I don't think if Nate was to win this, he would be knocking him out. He would be like a... He would just, he'd probably break Jake. Jake would just be tied up against the ropes. And Nate would just be beating him up. But I think... I think Jake's going to cut him. Like, I think... It's going to be hard. But I think he's going to land some jabs on Diaz. He's going to land some big shots. And I reckon... Because of, like, Nate Diaz's scar tissue. I reckon... That 
he's going. They're going to. This fight's going to be stopped from a cut. I don't know. I, I'll probably predict this with every Nate Diaz fight though, just to let you know. But his scar tissue was such a big deal. I know it's a lot harder to get cut in boxing, but with like Nate Diaz's scar tissue, he gets cut every fight except for he didn't get cut against Tony, so maybe that's a sign. But badly cut against Jorge, had to stop the fight because of the cut. I think Nate. Uh, I think Leon also cut him. That's another interesting thing, though. He came on late against Leon, and he almost got Leon out of there. God, this this fight could make the UFC look so bad. Like, if Jake Paul just flawlessly beats the shit out of Nate Diaz, it's going to make Leon look, like, sort of bad. I get Leon, like, dominated Nate Diaz, pretty much. But still, the fact that he got rocked by Nate, and if Jake, like, goes in and just, like, fucking flatlines Nate, like, immediately, it'd be such a bad look for Leon, but... Because it's not like Nate Diaz is, like, a fucking wrestler either. Like, his main, like, MMA fighting style is boxing. Like, he's got jiu-jitsu and everything, but he is an MMA boxer. So this could end up being such a bad look for the UFC. Like, oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, I really like Jake Paul in this fight. Don't know why he would make it 10 rounds, though. It was originally 8. Like, that that could really come back to bite him in the ass, though, because Nate Diaz's cardio is still really good. Like, how fucking funny would it be, though, if, like, Jake starts to just get the fuck beaten out of him in, like, the ninth round. I think it's 10th round. He just gets finished. Because he didn't have to agree to 10 rounds. Like, I feel like he made this fight harder for himself just because nobody's really picking Nate in this fight. But, uh, yeah, interesting, interesting fight. Like, it's so weird. Like, I remember watching Jake Paul versus Deji, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, he looks all right, you know. Like, he beat Deji pretty easily. I know people say, like, Deji gave him his hardest fight and all this sort of stuff, but that's just because he bled. Like, Jake won, like, every round pretty much, but Deji just caught him to, like, make him bleed. But Deji didn't even really win a round, I don't think, from memory. But, yeah, I remember that fight. I would never have thought that he would go on to, like, knock out fucking Tyron Woodley. Like, I, I, I have picked Jake Paul in every single one of his fights. But, like, I still, I wouldn't have expected it from that Deji fight. Like, I wouldn't have predicted that he'd be fighting, like, Tyron Woodley and Ben Asker and Tommy Fury. Like, actually knocked down Tommy Fury, too. But, yeah, he clearly lost against Tommy Fury, though, but... I think, obviously, Tommy Fury's a much better boxer than Nate Diaz, especially in just pure boxing. But, I don't know, maybe Nate, Nate can fucking... If Nate's best chance is coming on late, but I think he's just going to get beat up a little bit, especially while Jake's fresh. But I don't, I don't think Jake will knock him out cold. I'd be shocked if Nate Diaz gets knocked out cold. His chin's still, like, pretty solid. But he is, like, 38 years old, isn't he? Let me check. Yeah, he's getting up there in age. Oh, yeah, he is 38. Well, that chin has to go eventually. But he did get dropped a lot by Jorge, but head kicks. He also got finished by Josh Thompson with head kicks. You know, doesn't really get finished with the hands, but did get dropped by McGregor three times. Like, I'm still, I'm obviously, I'm going with Jake, but I'm just, like, thinking about how he gets it done, like, cause Nate's taken a lot of damage, plus with the boxing gloves, so much more blunt force trauma to the head, but, yeah, safe pick is obviously Jake, but I, th I think TKO, but I don't know if it's going to be, like, a flush knockout, or, a, like, an out cold, like, proper KO, or TKO, or... I'd say doctor stoppage is what I would lean to, just because I think I think Nate's gonna get cut. I don't know fucking how it's gonna happen, but somehow Jake could like just if he really wants to be like a ruthless cunt in the clinch, Jake could just like rub his like fucking glove up against like where Nate well, Nate suffered a lot of his cuts. Like, this is a sadistic sadistic thing to do, but he could just like fucking scrape his glove against uh. Nate scar tissue and like cut him open that way like jab at it a little bit and then like get him in the clinch and just scrape I don't know if that's legal or not but 
that's what I'd do if I was fighting Nate Diaz. I'd just try and like scrape at his cut, <laughs> like especially, you know, knowing how durable he is and how good his cardio is. But maybe I'm just a little bit sadistic. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not the most sadistic thing, but like it, when it comes to like fighting Nate Diaz, you know, you, it's it's, a, it's very hard to like knock him out. Maybe Jake's gonna go in there going gunning for a knockout, and then he's just gonna get fucked up. He's good because he has to fight like pretty smart. Because even though Nate's not a boxer, his cardio is still like a very like his best weapon is his cardio and his chin. So all his best assets are like not even got anything to do with his technique. He's got good output as well, obviously because of his cardio. But uh, yeah, Jake gets this done with the cut. But I don't. I wonder what's next. Like, if, say Jake Paul wins. Do you do him versus KSI? Like, is that fucking ever going to happen? Because I know KSI is fighting Tommy Fury. Which, what a weird timeline. Like, why is Tom, like, why is Tommy Fury just going for all the influencers? Go fucking fight Vidal Riley or something like that, man. Like, if you're going to fight anyone who's, like, involved in influencer boxing, go fight fucking Vidal Riley. Because he's, like, an actual, like, fucking proper boxer. But... I don't know, Tommy Fury, I, I mean, I can't hate on it, Tommy Fury's making bank, he'll probably eventually get that Jake Paul rematch too, so that's like, that's like Tommy Fury's like fucking, he's financially sound for the rest of his life, like, you gotta respect that, like, honestly, like, fucking good on bloke, just beat up a bunch of influencers and get rich, and Nate Diaz, I know he said, I think Nate Diaz said that he wants to get back in the UFC, so, I don't think that'll be next though, I reckon, this fight will happen. I reckon Nate boxes again, probably. But fuck knows who he'd be boxing against. I wouldn't mind like a Nate Diaz Anderson Silva boxing match, not gonna lie, since since he's fighting at 185, that'd be pretty fun, I reckon. Like a pure boxing match. Because I like watching Anderson Silva box. Like Anderson Silva's boxing matches. Have been pretty fucking entertaining. Like Yeah, he's just Anderson's had some really good boxing matches. Like I like, I like that he's he's found something to do in combat sports and he's like succeeding at it. I know he lost to Jake Paul, but it's not a bad loss. But yeah, I, do, I guess I just rant a little bit there. But yeah, Jake Paul probably fights KSI next, or he rematches Tommy Fury. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I feel like this fight could look really sad if, like, Nate Diaz just comes out, like, fucking, really, like, this, like, really slow, like, oh, God. It's going to be interesting. Nate's going to, like, be fucking mocking him a lot. He'll probably try and Stockton, slop, uh, <laughs> Stockton slap him with a boxing glove, so that'll be interesting to see. But I reckon body shots, I reckon Jake's going to, like, He's going to be going for a lot of body shots and then mixing it to the head. That seems to be like his go-to combo. He caught Anderson Silva with that combo. I think that's the combo he caught uh, Tommy Fury with as well. So, yeah. Be interesting. It's going to be so weird watching Jake Paul and Nate Diaz throw hands. Like, I still can't get over, like, Jake Paul throwing, throwing hands with fucking Anderson Silva. <laughs> like, that is that's such a cursed time on it. Like, I've seen, I've watched Jake Paul punch up with fucking Tommy Fury, Anderson Silva, Tyron Woodley, Ben Askren, Nate Robinson, Anison Gibb, fucking Deji. Like, the, the fucking, the, the levels that have, he's gone through is so fucking funny to see. And he shares, like, a common opponent with Floyd Mayweather, and that one opponent was fucking Deji. We're in the weirdest, like, universe when it comes to combat sports right now. I fucking love it. It's so funny. Yeah, but I went on a little bit of a rant there. But, yeah, I reckon Jake Paul gets, like, a TKO by cut. Probably within four rounds, I reckon. But if, if fucking Jake goes too hard early, Nate's going to make him pay for that, I reckon. Like, I feel like Nate's got a way better chance than anyone's properly giving him. I feel like people are just expecting Jake to run through him. But I think, I think Nate's going to give a harder fight than people think. But I still think Jake wins. But I wouldn't be too shocked if Nate comes in late and gets a stoppage maybe. But safe safe bet is uh, Jake Paul, I reckon, within four. 
by a TKO due to doctor stoppage. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening. I'll uh, don't know if I'll be making another video later. I'll probably figure something out to make. But uh, yeah, th thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you. And uh, I'll catch you next time.